the first thing we'll do is we'll open the AWS Management Console and search for AWS AppSync. From the AWS AppSync dashboard, we'll click Create API to create a new AppSync API. For the type of API, we'll choose Build from Scratch and then click Start. Next, we'll give the API a name and click Create. The first thing we'll do is we'll click Data Sources so we can create a new data source. The data source we'll be using is the CoinLore API, located at api.coinlore.com. To create this data source, we'll click Create Data Source. Next, we'll choose a data source name and choose HTTP Endpoint as the data source type. Next, we'll enter the HTTP Endpoint as the CoinLore API, api.coinlore.com. Next, we'll take a look at the data structure returned from the API. The data that we're interested in is the array called data containing an ID, a symbol, a name, and other properties for every item in the array. With this in mind, we'll go back to our AWS AppSync dashboard and click Schema to create our new schema. We'll first create a type of coin with the symbol, name, rank, and price underscore USD field. We'll then create two queries, one that will list the coins and return the JSON response, and another that will list the coins and return a coins array. Next, we'll save the schema and open the list coins JSON resolver. In this resolver, we'll first choose the data source name as the crypto API that we set up when we created our HTTP data source. We'll then update the request mapping template to be a resource path of slash API slash tickers slash. Finally, for the response mapping template, we'll just return the context result dot body, which is the body of the HTTP request. To test this out, we'll open the queries view and create a new query called listJSON that we'll call the listCoinsJSON query. If everything is set up properly, you should see a JSON response return on the right hand side. Next, we'll attach a resolver to the listCoins query. Here, we'll choose the data source name of Crypto API. For the request mapping template, we'll update the resource path to slash API slash tickers slash. In the response mapping template, we'll create a variable called body set to the parse JSON of the context result dot body. Finally, we'll return the body.data in the form of JSON by calling util.toJSON. To test this out, we'll go to the queries view and create a new query called listCoins returning the price underscore USD, name, rank, and symbol for every coin in the array. Next, we'll look at how to add query parameters. We'll update the list coins query in the main schema, passing in a limit and a start integer. To test this out, 
We'll go back to the queries and we can now pass in arguments for the limit and the start number.